we'll see in detail about x-ray pelvis the radiographic views anatomy lines and landmarks which are very important while reporting the x-rays in this video so what all are we going to learn in this video we'll see first the illustrations that is how to draw a pelvis and its parts we'll see the radiographic views in anatomies and then we'll see what are the important lines and landmarks used in adults and pediatric hip x-rays then we'll see some hidden areas where subtle fractures can be missed pelvis is made up of a set of bones which we are going to draw now and label so this is pelvis with bilateral hips it's made of two hip bones right and left or also known as innominate bones there are two lower limb bones that is femur in the center posteriorly we have sacrum above which we have lumbar vertebrae hip bones and sacrum are joined by sacroiliac joints femur and hip bones are joined by the hip joint and two pelvic bones are joined in the center anteriorly by symphysis pubis which is a cartilage now we shall separate each hip bone and see its anatomy and its parts individually each hip bone is made up of three separate bones which fuse together to form the hip bone that is the iliac bone the ischium and the pubic bone and acetabulum contains parts of all the three bones forming the acetabular socket it has the part of iliac bone the pubic bone and the ischium okay and the cartilage joining all the three bones is also called as triradiate cartilage now we'll see these parts on the illustration which we drew previously also its sub parts this is the ileum or a blade like structure this is the pubis and posteriorly this ischium in the pubis we have superior pubic ramus inferiorly we have inferior pubic ramus and the hole in the center or the gap is called as obturator foramen this eminence anteriorly in the iliac bone is called as anterior superior iliac spine which is an important superficial landmark and this is the iliac crest of the bone we'll see the parts of femur now this is the femur bone that there is head of the femur engaged in the acetabulum this greater trochanter and lesser trochanter two eminences after the anatomy now we'll come to radiographic views what are the common views of x-rays which we take in pelvis and bilateral hip there's ap view there is lateral view there is frog leg view and there is done view which is not done a lot now now we'll see how the anatomical parts which we saw prior looks on the x-ray this is the iliac bone with iliac crest anterior superior iliac spine the eminence then this is the anterior inferior iliac spine and this is the sacroiliac joint between sacrum and ilium now we'll see the parts of pubic bone this superiorly is the superior pubic ramus then we have inferior pubic ramus and both pubic bones of right and left are joined together by the cartilage called as pubic symphysis next we have the ischium and the landmark on ischium is the ischial tuberosity where it forms attachment site for most of the lower limb muscles these are the obturator foramen on both sides right and left and these and posteriorly we have greater sciatic notch where neurovascular structures pass through other than the pelvic bones we have the sacrum joining both pelvic bones posteriorly we have lumbar vertebrae which is seen on ap view the last four and five vertebrae next we have head of femur the neck of femur greater trochanter and lesser trochanter seen on ap view x-rays coming to detailed anatomy of hip joint first we'll see the head of the femur this is the outline of head of femur this line joining greater and lesser trochanter is the intertrochanteric line if fracture happens we call it intertrochanteric fracture here next we'll see the acetabulum this is the roof of acetabulum here faintly we can see the anterior rim of acetabulum 
I'll draw it again for you. This is the anterior rim of acetabulum. Posteriorly, we can see the posterior rim of acetabulum also. We should look into that in AP X ray. These two lines do not intersect. Now, this medially we have acetabular fossa in which the head is incorporated. This line is the ilio ischial line joining ilium and ischial bones. This line along the pelvic inlet is iliopectineal line. If the head of femur crosses the ilioischemial line, it's called the protusio acetabuli. Coming to lateral view of hip x rays, it's used to see the hip joint very well. Now we can see the head of the femur entirely the lesser trochanter, the greater trochanter of femur, entire acetabular fossa or the hip joint. There is a modification of this view called horizontal beam lateral view which is taken to see the neck of the femur if fracture is suspected. It is very well visualized on this view. Next frog leg view taken in cases of suspected slipped capital femoral epiphysis. We are done with the landmarks and anatomy on x-ray. Now we will see some important lines and measurements. We will see what is Shenton's arc, Klein's line, Hillgreener's line, Perkins line and Waldenstorm sign. All these are seen on AP view of the x-ray. First we will see the Shenton's arc. Shenton's arc is drawn somewhat like this. It is a line joining medial cortex of neck of the femur and inferior margin of superior pubic ramus this arc should be continuous and intact on ap x-rays it is broken in cases of fractures involving the structures involved in the arc so now we'll see what are the fractures which can cause disruption of this line this line is broken in cases of fracture of neck of femur in cases of fracture of superior pubic ramus or in cases of displacement of the femur Shenton's arc was in adult x-ray. Rest of the lines and measurements we will see in the pediatric hip x-rays. So how do we identify it's the pediatric hip? There is unfused triradiate cartilage and unfused epiphysis which says these are the pediatric hip x-rays. So first thing we see is in cases of suspected slipped capital femoral epiphysis we draw line of clean drawn tangential to the lateral aspect of the femoral neck. Normally, this line will intersect the part of epiphysis of the femoral bone. This is normal. In cases of epiphyseal slip, there is no intersection of line with the epiphysis. Next, we will see the Hillgreeners and Perkins line, which are drawn in cases of suspected developmental dysplasia of hip in the pediatric x-rays taken in a 4-6 to six month old child. So, first line is drawn along the inferior aspect of bilateral triradiate cartilage. The line cuts through inferior aspect of both triradiate cartilages. This is the Hillgreener's line. Next, we will see what are the tips of the acetabulum. These are the tip of acetabulum and line perpendicular to Hillgreener's line passing through tip of the lateral aspect of acetabulum is nothing but the Perkins line. So these two lines are perpendicular to each other. Now how do we detect developmental dysplasia of hip or how do we suspect it? We have to see the position of the femoral head with respect to these two lines. Perkins hill greeners 90 degrees to each other. We recognize this is the epiphysis of the femur. It usually most of the part of epiphysis lies in the lower inner quadrant of these lines if there is any developmental dysplasia suspected then the epiphyseal head majority lies in the other quadrants either upper or the outer quadrants of the lines before moving to walden sign sign now we will see normal hip x-ray with intersection of all the lines shows this tear drop which is normal appearance on a ap view of x-ray we have to see the distance between the medial aspect of the head of femur with lateral aspect of the tear drop okay the normal tear drop 
on AP X-rays. If this distance is more than eleven millimeter unilaterally, or if it is if there is difference of more than two millimeter when measured on both sides, which is more uh, relevant and reliable, then it is said to be Waldenstrom sign positive. Now this more than eleven millimeter or more than two mm difference shows that the distance is increased. So increased distance is a highly specific sign for hip effusion on that side. Lastly, we'll see some hidden areas on AP X-ray of hip for subtle fractures. First, we'll have to see the transverse processes of L five, bilateral sacroiliac joints, ala of the sacrum. superior and inferior pubic ramae the site for stress fractures and we will see the iliac crest anterior superior iliac spine inferior iliac spine the greater trochanter site for stress fractures again lesser trochanteric fractures can be missed and then ischial tuberosity follow our youtube page and instagram for more such videos thank you